This is a fan production, done for entertainment purposes only. No attempt has been made to infringe or supersede any existing copyright in relation to Doctor Who, which remains the property of the British Broadcasting Corporation. Paul Vastra contains adult material and themes which we strongly advise is not suitable for younger listeners. because I wasn't there. Has it really gotten that bad? Why do you think I haven't put my hood down? Stop staring, Jen. I'm sorry. I'm just worried, that's all. Nothing I can do. Here, just have this. I'm, I'm not hungry. Alice! Alice, wait! Will you leave me alone? No! No, I won't! I want to help you! I don't need your charity! I'm not offering charity. Just someone to talk to. You've been ignoring me at work. Where have you even been sleeping? Stop! Stop! Granny? Jenny? Please, just... Just let me be. December, Harold. No wonder you're freezing. Take your coat off and warm yourself by the fire. She looks after me well, doesn't she, Jim? She does. I'm surprised you've not got yourself a fellow yet. I know some lads have noticed you, you know. Well, especially that Samuel over in the Red Tavern. Ock, leave the girl alone. Here, have some soup. She's here because of Alice. Oh, aye. I hadn't seen her in a while. We used to see her at work. But she's not been in all week. Well, it certainly is, but it's a lost cause. She isn't well. If she refused to go to hospital, well... Look, I'm sorry, Jane. She's like a sister to me. I just wish she would let me out. I know I can't do much, but... It's just the thought of her wasting away. All on her own. Right, why don't you come join me and the lads in the Red Tavern night, yeah? I know Susan's going to be there. Susan will only be there to try and get in some men's trousers. Well, Jen's been there before, whenever Susan's been working. Jenny Scarity! <sighs> Not in that way, Molly. Just as a distraction, you know, have a bit of a sing-song. And rank, no doubt. You're going to become one of those types, aren't you? Oh, well, someone's starting to sound like their mother. Cahol. I have no plan to become one of those types, as you say. I go for Sam. And as Harold said, I've got to find myself a fella at some point. I'm not even lying. That was the reason I was socialising. It had gotten to the point where I'd look at what Molly and Harold had and thought, I could have a go. Just for a simpler life. If I was married to a fella, 
I might have a little more safety. And it looked like, for a bit, that man was going to be Samuel Beaton. This is nice. <laughs> Sorry, I did dress better. Money's tight. Well, if you ever need help with money, I mean, if, if you need any. I know I only work at the tavern, but I, I have a bit of money. Uh, sorry, are you cold? I I'll get you a hot drink. Uh, come on. I'm not a charity case. I know, but hot wine will warm you up. And inject me with a little bit more confidence. <laughs> oh, sorry, I made it awkward, didn't I? I'll shut up. So, circus girl. Never been myself. The circus, I mean... Oh, must have been nice to see England. I've barely left London myself. My parents ran a bakery here for years. I used to help, but the flower sort of didn't agree with me, so now I work in the Red Tavern, as you know, because that's where we met. I have two brothers. Uh, they're older than me, so, but I, I never really see them, so no clue what they do. Uh, do you have any siblings? Yeah. Um, a brother and a sister. You're the eldest. Can we talk about something else? Sorry, but remember they kicked me out. Ah, oh, I uh, guess. Sorry. Ah, <laughs> oh, Carolers. Now there's my favourite Victorian chambermaid. Sorry. Uh, I said, uh, what's your favourite Christmas hymn? They weren't the most interesting get-togethers. So I won't bore you any more with that thing. This Christmas was my last on the streets. The one that followed, <sighs> that was the complete opposite. A gift for me. That is part of the Christmas tradition, is it not? Well, open it then. You have changed my world. Open it, Jenny, please. Thank you, Mum. I love it. I thought you might. I also have a small dinner planned for us both. Are you cooking? Is that wise? I'll have you know I've read Mrs. Beaton's cooking for Christmas book from front to back. All will be well. My love, do not fret. What we got then? Goose, with all the trimmings, and of course, plum pudding for after. I haven't had plum pudding in years. But first, another gift. You spoil me. Something special for this evening. Oh. <laughs> not in that way. Of course not. <laughs> I love you, Jenny. Pardon? I said, I love you. Sorry. I got distracted. My thoughts are all over the shop at the moment. I don't know what's up with me. Right. Christmas 85. We have a get-together. Me, Susan, Harold and a couple of his friends. Look, I'm telling you, lad, she's a vampire. <laughs> Are you serious? Ellie isn't a vampire, Jim. She's uh, not too bad looking barmaid, yeah, but definitely not a vampire. Look, look at this, look at this, I have proof. See right over there, look, look. Jim, minute. Ellie isn't a vampire. Now shut up. Mm. Oh, there you, Susan. There you go, lads. Top up. Cost you now. Oh, oh bet. But uh, I'm sure my Annie would have words if I did that. Hang on, we all know Annie Chapman sleeps around. But only when we are short of a penny. Ooh, that new dress looks nice on you, Jim. Thanks, Harold. I couldn't believe it when Molly gave it me. I know it's only one of our old ones, but I haven't had any new clothes since I was 12. Well, I guess it looks more grown up. It shows off more of your womanly figure. <laughs> Oi, down you. Sounds tender. <laughs> Hands off. How about a wee game? Like what? Uh, new year approaching. Let's predict the future. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Sam! You got a Bible behind the bar? What? Uh, somewhere. Right, we'll mm. go fetch his Lord's Bible from your lad now, would you, Jim? 
Uh, um, won't be a moment. Uh, you look lovely, uh, by the way. You lost it. What me to go fetch Jelly? She, she knows where one is. Uh, no, no, no. Uh, here you go. Predicting the future by luck of this book. Hopefully yours involves marriage and kids, eh? Sure. Why not? Right. Oh, I'm predicting the future. Where will it land? Ooh. How does this even work? Oh, why you replay this? I'm not much of a reader. So you flip through the Bible and randomly stop. Then the first passage your eyes set upon is the prediction. Uh, Jim, this year will bring you. He is the one who does <laughs> what is sinful of the mm. devil, because the devil has been sinning from the beginning. <laughs> what? <laughs> you dirty bugger! <laughs> Why? <laughs> I'm saying nothing. Right, now go on. Your turn, Jim. All right, all right. Okay. <clears throat> right, um, here we go. Um, Harold. Oh, yeah. <laughs> a merry art doeth good. Like a medicine. But a broken spirit drieth the bones. Mm. Ah. Well, this got depressing fast. <laughs> here, pass it here. I'll try for Jen. Uh, you can't read? <laughs> Not a word, can I, though? I can point, though, can't I? <laughs> this... This one... here. Right. The future of Jenny Scurry. <clears throat> Above all, love each other deeply. Because love covers over a multitude of sins. Oh, oi, Scam, come kiss your girl, since she's meant to have a multitude of sin. <laughs> kiss her? Yeah, come on, New Year's treat. Uh, Jenny, sh should I? Oh, all the lads shy. <laughs> sure. Hey! hey. Uh, thank you, Miss Scarity. Well, uh, well, that was the most formal kiss I've ever seen. Uh, it was for more gin. Hey! Oh, yeah. Come on! <laughs> could do. No way you're getting that DOS house now. And you're in no state to keep in a doorway. Are you trying to say I'm drunk? <laughs> Not drunk. Mary. Sleep girl. Come on. We're back to the factory tomorrow. Mm. Jen, tell me the truth. You really don't have any interest in that Sam, do you? I advise you don't have a client tonight. <laughs> don't change the subject. No. No, I don't. But if I have to marry somebody... <laughs> <laughs> marry for love, not just for convenience. Here, Jen, what's your type? My type? See, <clears throat> that's where the problem lies. <laughs> How so? My type? Well, let's just say you, I can't marry my type. No one can marry my type. <laughs> Susan, I haven't told this to anybody. Not really. Well, now you've piqued my interest. Just don't throw me out, right? Like, let me stay the night. I, I won't try anything, I promise. Jen? Uh, my type aren't male. Uh, what are you saying? I'm simple. I'm disgusting. I'm not right. I like women. <laughs> that doesn't make you sinful or disgusting. It makes you strong enough to think with your own mind. And who told you all that? Society. I'm not here to judge. You're a strong woman, Jenny. Embrace it. Who else knows? Oh, I bet I'm the last. 
but always. <laughs> Nobody knows. <laughs> and you're leading that Sam along, poor lad. I've, I've never really thought about it, you know. Kissing other women and things like that. What's it like? Famous kisses and men, I guess. Maybe I should compare, in case a client asks or something like that. Susan, what are you saying? Come here. Susan. <laughs> Sus Susan, so... Don't what? Te tease me. Jen, come here. Sus Susan. Will you shut up? What? Oh, Jesus. Jen, Jen, get up, girl. Hmm? Wake up. We're, like, late. Like, really, really late. Hmm? I'm up. Oh, God, I feel dreadful. My jaw feels like I've been punched. Stockings. <laughs> well, they're definitely yours. Thanks. Look, will you get a shift on? Oh, I'm moving, I'm moving. Susan, <sighs> about last night... Oh, not right now, Jen. Wearing his shoes. Oh, Miss Elizabeth's going to punish the hell out of us. Nothing new there, then. Come on! Come in. Hello, ladies. Should you be at work? Why do you think we're running in both directions, Sam, you fool? Missed your knock-up? <laughs> Sam! <sighs> <sighs> Give us a lift to buy, would you? Uh, yeah! Oh, but these barrels, oh I have to... Oh, don't look at me like that! Like what? Oh, get on. We'll cost you a kiss, though. <laughs> oh, so just give me a minute. Oh, my... Uh... There you go. Now on your horse. Now get us to that bleeding match factory! <sighs> Jenny, straight in. Straight to dipping. Hopefully no one's at the door today. It's so cold, so I know Miss Elizabeth definitely won't be there. You go ahead. I'll catch up. Jen, you're asking for trouble. I think I just saw Alice. <sighs> Get it in your head, girl. She don't want any of us. I'm going in. It's bloody freezing and I really need this job. Alice? What are you doing up this end? The money from the factory stock. Was getting a pound a week. Tried to get my job back. Alice, you're sick. You can't. I know I'm sick, Green. You don't have to remind me. Can't even take this hood down now. I made a kid cry yesterday. I can't eat. I can't even sleep. Try the hospital. Please. It's too late for that. You've given up, haven't you? Alice, you never give up. Well, things change slightly when half your face is missing. Look, Jen. Look at me. Happy now? Now you can stare at me in disgust. I don't care. It doesn't matter what you look like. To everyone else it does. And it's not just that anyway. It hurts, Jen. It bloody hurts. Every day I wake up and it's worse. I've got the early signs, Alice. The jaw ache. The tooth pain. <clears throat> Miss Scarry, you are loitering and extremely late to be standing outside talking to that. Sir, she's sick. My office. That's not going to help her or any of the other girls. You. Office. Now. I'm sorry, Green. 
Well, well, Miss Garrity. Look at you. Grown out of your old hand-me-down. Well, certain aspects of you did, didn't they? In we go. Yeah, bloody clock stopped working again. Stand on the line so I can see you. Uh, you're a very pretty woman, Miss Scarity. Mm, yes. Imagine your body in a corset. You're in the wrong line of business, girl. And you'd get paid more to lay on your back, you pretty thing. I'd pay a few bob for that. You should be punished. You know, you've been a very bad girl. Wouldn't you say? Yes, sir. Good to see we agree. Say that again, but look at me. Yes. Look at me. Yes, sir. Good. Take down your hair. You have pretty hair, Miss Scarity. Well, say thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. I'm just going to make you more comfortable. It's warm in here. Let's undo some of these buttons. There. There we go. Much better. Mm. Such soft skin. No. No. Don't cry. Shh. I will make you feel sensational. I can already feel you quivering at my touch. You beautiful creature. Go lock the door. Yes, sir. I thought you said Jane was right behind you. She was. You don't think he saw her, do you? Only Miss Elizabeth is away and you know what he gets like when it comes to punishment when she's off. Oh Lord, I hope she's just gone somewhere with Alice. You know, I'm not a religious lady, but I pray she's gone off with that bloody American. <sighs> so do I, Susan. You okay, girl? You've gone pale. Uh, we have so many new girls in here today. Up in the attic again. That's why they're putting more tanks in next door. Lord, how many matches do people need? Jesus! Once you've finished dressing, make way to that address. There you'll meet a woman, name of Annie Chapman. She has a gift I paid her to make for Miss Elizabeth. Go collect her. A man of my reputation can't be seen hanging around Annie's place. Yes, sir. Anything else, sir? We'll have to wait and see when you return, won't we? Now, go. I made my way out, back into the snow. Letting out a breath of fresh air, I looked down at the stiff of paper. Annie Chapman. I knew of her through her lover Frank, the sift maker, who had a habit of hanging around the Red Tavern. Annie Chapman's well known now, though. She was one of his victims. Jack's. Jack the Ripper had cut her down a year after we met. You never told Mam about me. Why didn't you? When you found out I died, you said nothing. Why don't you ever talk about your past, Jenny? You should have told Mam. Pardon? I said I'd fetch that for you, love. 
you're you're Jenny, right? Yeah. I heard Frank and Sam chatting about you the other day. You're the circus girl, right? Yes, so. <sighs> My hands are cut to fu- Jen, what are you doing here? Just picking up something for Mr B. This is lovely. She's talented, right? <laughs> it's easy if you know how. I wouldn't know where to start. Well, did your ma not teach you to sew? Nah. I'll teach you, if you'd like. She'll charge. You ain't doing nothing for free. We need the money. Ignore him. I'll teach you. Basic embroidery is always a good skill to have. It might get you out of that match factory. Uh, Jenny, your right cheek is swollen. Does it hurt? <sighs> Joining the toothache gang, Jen. <laughs> it's not that bad. But, yeah. Up to me too. I'd love to learn to needle, but I can't pay. I, I know, and I wouldn't expect you to. I tell you what, we'll start Sunday. Just a simple thing, like your name on a pillar. Why? Because it gives her an excuse not to have clients on a Sunday night. That's why. Uh, and he, you finished the gin again, you greedy cow! <coughs> I'll sort us with Jen in a moment, Frank. Calm yourself. I'll, I'll see you Sunday, girl. It's burning, it's hot and clammy, but I can't stop shaking. My mouth, it tastes of blood. My chest is rattling. I've been lost. So lost. It collapsed. It bleeding collapsed. God! Stay back, love. It ain't safe. There are people under there. Boy, over here. We're pulling them out. Just stay back. This is no job for a girl. Boy, boy, lads. There's someone here. Quick, over here. I'll help. Ah. Hey, are you sure, love? Why don't you go give me that? This isn't a job for women crap too. Come on, let's move this. Oh, be careful. We don't want it to cave in anymore. Just move it over there. Over here, no, quick! Hello? What's going on? Harold? Harold, is that you? Jen? What? What happened? There's... There's been an accident. We're trying to get you out. Just... Just... Stay where you are. I don't think I could go anywhere if I tried. Go there. Girl, here. I reckon... <sighs> We can make a hole you'll fit in. Go down there, try and keep him calm. Uh, don't move much around though, we will be stuck too. Uh, give me out with this. Um, I'll take off my dress. I'll, I'll move better then. Oh, don't look shocked, lad, just move the rubble. In you go, love. Be careful. I'm here, Jen. I'm fine. Stop fussing. They're moving everything as quickly as they can. It didn't have to come down the whole land, you know. But I'm here now. She just had to deal with it. Jen, I can't feel my legs. She's gonna be alright. Everyone in the docks is up there moving those bricks. Boring day, was it? Wanted some fun. <laughs> Definitely wasn't the most exciting day. No. Well, I'm sure a building falling on top of you is going to make a good conversation for you and Charlie when you get back. Yeah. <laughs> Probably just laugh at me. So with Molly. Why didn't you just step out of the way, you idiot? <laughs> <laughs> she makes me laugh. Jim. I need you to tell Molly that... Don't even talk like that. Lads, but be careful, you nearly caved in then. Sorry, sorry. Sorry, look, careful, lads, come on. Do you know how different our lives are, Jen? You're what, 18? 
I had a two-year-old at your age. <laughs> oh, what did you do? Oh, cut me hand. I'll be alright. Oh, come closer, let me see. Harold, you're stuck under a pile of bricks and yet you're concerned about my hand. Yeah, well, we gotta look after one another, right? I mean, you've crawled under a fallen building to get to me. <laughs> True. Shouldn't you be at work? I know you're worried about my job. <laughs> It's the way they treat you, girls. I'm surprised any of you are still there, to be honest. I've tried to get Molly out for years. I know what it's like when it comes to punishment. Dark pay, longer hours. <laughs> like a couple months ago, Molly was late and... Well, you know. You know what Mr. I'm God's gift to the world is like. <laughs> Jam. I can't feel my legs. Try, try distracting yourself on the banks of the roses. roses. My I love the eyes. Good night. Good night. You've been listening to Before Vastra 3. Jenny was voiced by Abby Louise. Vastra, Alia E. Torrey. Alice, Joe Eddings. Susan, Lauren Lee Hurst. Molly, Chelsea Lagan. Sam, Jack Reeves. Mr. B, Matt Barrett. Harold, Brandon McCaffrey. Frank, Azia Holmes. Annie, Amy Suffret. Jim, Zach Rosenfield. Other Voices by Ian Harris. This production was directed by Brandon McCaffrey and Lauren Lee Hurst. Written by Abby Louise with music by James York. <laughs>